This is the Hyderabad based Tsunami Warning Center. The only one of its kind in the Indian Ocean region, the Tsunami Warning Center was set up after the devastating tsunami that hit the Indian Ocean coast on 26 December 2004. Over 11,000 people perished. The 6,000 still missing are feared to be dead. Infrastructure worth billions of rupees was damaged. But this disaster had a lesson for India. The progressing country with several advancements in the field of science and technology, India, a big country in the Indian Ocean region, had to do something to mitigate the loss caused by tsunamis in the future. In Kois, Indian National Centre for Ocean Information Services was chosen to house a world-class tsunami warning centre. The INCOI's mandate is to provide information related to ocean, which could be required by the general society or a government or a industry or in the matter anybody, I mean. So, the tsunami warning center was to be set up. The INCOIS was a natural choice because INCOIS has already uh, started developing the systems to disseminate the information, generate the, use the data to generate the information. So the basic uh, infrastructure was already existing. Only this was needed to be upgraded as a mission critical system because the other information is not very critical in the sense that if you don't provide either one day or two day because of certain reasons, no serious effect would be felt. There would be certain uh, economic or like that, but nothing, uh, people may not lose their lives or something like that. But this is a mission critical system. So the large amount of redundancy is to be built in and it has to have a capability to process the data very fast. So different kinds of systems are required, different kinds of softwares are required different kinds of the entire process of a standard operating procedure which needs to be completely automatic. So this was the something which were uh, needed to be done and INCOIS has a capability and necessary expertise to do this. So I think uh, this was the major cause. Apart from that uh, incidentally you know the Hyderabad is uh, practically disaster free. I mean, there are no earth likely to be earthquakes or a floods or a, is not near ocean. So no oceanographic hazards, no geo hazards, no landslides. So that way is a pretty safe from the disaster point of view. So that is another good uh, way of uh, good place to have a your disaster center so that it won't affected by any disaster. Nearly 400 million people live on the vast 7,500 km coastal stretch. The Tsunami Warning Centre was established with an aim to place early warning system for mitigation of oceanic disaster that may affect this large population. The Warning Centre was established under the Ministry of Earth Sciences as the nodal ministry at a cost of Rs 1,250 million. Rupees. This is being done in collaboration with the Department of Science and Technology, Department of Space and the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research. Functioning 24 by 7, all days of the year, the state-of-the-art centre equipped with necessary computational and communication infrastructure monitors all kinds of information from all strategically involved organisations and countries that can help predict tsunami. The idea? is to give timely warnings. At the centre, the major activity is acquisition of data, which is organised as database. With stress on getting quality data, the data is organised from different sources, from the satellite, from the internet and from the VSAT. The first input is monitoring earthquake. World over, the observation systems are the same. Hence, all earthquake-related information pours in at this centre constantly both from the National Seismic Network, the Indian Meteorological Department and other international seismic networks. Historically, red dots show earthquakes. 
Even as these pictures are being taken, earthquakes have hit different regions of the world. The entire world is dotted with sensors. Moving in the spirit of achieving better and faster scientific interventions to help humanity, INCOIS works in tandem with international agencies. Data is acquired from 300 stations. Since we are talking of an earthquake in the ocean floor, the data is also of different varieties. Seismic data, tide data, bottom pressure recorder data. The amount of data coming is very large. The beauty of the system is, it efficiently takes in the data and immediately analyzes it. Thus, moving quickly from acquisition, the Tsunami Warning Center processes the data and the target is a bulletin that has to be issued at the earliest. Time being most crucial, the bulletin is issued in 5 to 15 minutes time, depending on the complexity of the task. If the earthquake is of more than 6.5 magnitude on the Richter scale, the software automatically processes it through the 50,000 scenarios fed into the computer. The entire process is fully automated. There is no human intervention. Seismic stations show such pictures. The software Syscom catches real-time data just like the heart pulse. Software is Hydra, which serves the redundancy purpose. This center has to run 24 by 7 and all the time you can't have experts sitting and manning the control room. So generally there would be a watch staff would be always there 24 by 7. And so the system should be such that first bulletin goes without any human intervention. Now, that, that was the our goal and to do this, there is large amount of sophistication required. First, you have to acquire all the data, harmonize them into similar fashion and it should, as soon as the data comes, it should get processed. So, any earthquake is noticed at the earliest. We have been able to do most earthquake within five to seven minutes. So that is very good. Then once the earthquake is located, we should be immediately able to find out its tsunami genic potential. Now how to do this? For that you need to generate large amount of scenarios for different earthquake magnitude at different depths at different locations. The data coming in goes straight to the databases. The process has been so designed that within minutes the verdict is out whether the earthquake is tsunamigenic or not. If it is tsunamigenic, how much travel time will be taken to reach various places? If it is tsunamigenic, arrangements are made for scientists and experts to reach the INCOI center within 10 minutes. The expert verdict comes in the form of confirmatory bulletin which is the second bulletin. In the meantime, more data is coming in. Important inputs are tidal data and the bottom pressure recorder inputs because they all help tell you where is the effect moving towards. To understand the working of the Tsunami Warning Center, let's see how does a tsunami occur. The first precondition for tsunami is there must be an earthquake of 6.5 magnitude or more in the ocean. These earthquake details are continuously monitored like this here. The second crucial requirement is plate movement in the ocean floor must lead to vertical displacement of water. If it is displacement, then it will lead to a tsunami. The scenarios created are through mathematical modeling. If the earthquake is of 6.5 magnitude and above, the computer matches it with the scenario modeled for that. This calculation of travel time is done automatically. The energy produced by the earthquake and the displacement of water pushes water in the same direction. This direction can be calculated. Another crucial data is got through use of bottom pressure recorders which have been installed by the sister agency of INCOIS, NIOT, National Institute of Ocean Technology. These red dots show the location of BPRs, 2 in the Makran coast and 10 in the Bay of Bengal. 
Of these, four are already deployed in the Bay of Bengal and two in the Arabian Sea. The bottom pressure recorders record one observation in normal mode every 15 minutes, which is four observations per hour. If the tsunami wave is coming, it will detect it and switch to tsunami mode and then it will record observations every 15 seconds. The tsunami warning center can transfer the buoy in request mode. It means it can request the buoy and get the data at any time. The buoys relays the data to the satellite from where it is received at the tsunami warning center. Another crucial data input is from the tide gauges. They have been installed by the Survey of India, SOI and NIOT. Together, they show changes. Based on real-time water level observations, tsunami predictions are made. If you look at India, there are two specific tsunami prone areas. One is the Andaman Sumatra subduction zone and the second is Makran subduction zone. Both the regions are monitored continuously. If the earthquake in ocean is followed by activity in ocean floor leading to water displacement, the decision support system gives an automatic alarm, email, notifications and SMSs. This is the scenario database which using different earthquake parameters like location, magnitude and focal depth has generated 50,000 scenarios along the two tsunami genic zones. In case of an earthquake of magnitude 6.5 and above, the closest scenario is picked up by the decision support system. For example, if an earthquake has hit the area near Andaman, the decision support system will look at the closest scenario and all this in near real time. Then for each scenario, you have travel time, run-up heights for particular coastal locations called coastal forecast points. This means if tsunami has been triggered, what time will it arrive? What will be the wave height? What will be the wave time? All information appears on the screen. In the Indian Ocean, there are 1800 coastal forecast points. For each point, the arrival time and wave height has been calculated. For instance, on September 12, 2007, after an earthquake of 8.4 magnitude hit the Java region, the tide gauge also showed 60 cm displacement of water at Padang. But the direction of the tsunami was calculated to be moving off the Indian coast. When it was seen that the wave energy moved southwest, then it was declared that India is safe and the watch given earlier was withdrawn. This was the first test for INCOIS and the Tsunami Warning Center after it was set up. Here the question is, when should the public or administration be warned? If more than 2 meters of water is displaced, the areas will be placed under warning. Warning means evacuation is required. If the displacement is 0.5 to 2 meters, the regions shown by mathematical modeling should be put on alert. Alert means no evacuation is needed but beaches must be avoided because strong currents are expected. If the displacement is less than 0.5, the regions will be put under watch. Watch means official machinery and administration must be cautious and on standby. INCOIS follows a SOP, Standard Operating Procedure for Dissemination of Information. The Tsunami Warning Center also looks at specific details. For example, for particular coastal locations to get inundation levels by modeling, one needs high-resolution topography and bathymetry data sets. After this input, the model gives inundation maps. The community level inundation maps are very useful for assessing the population and infrastructure at risk. ALTM, Airborne Laser Terrain Mapping Surveys, give data generated by NRSC, National Remote Sensing Center of ISRO. The entire range of communication method, ranging from timely reception of data from the sensors to the dissemination of information, is done through an end-to-end -end communication plan using the INSAT service. A high-level redundancy has been built into the communication system to avoid single-point failure. Another model helps get coastal vulnerability map of districts which are provided by the state administrations. This is the vulnerability map of Nagapattinam and this is of Kadlaw district. Both these names ring a bell as they sadly indicate the huge loss of life and property during the December 2004 tsunami. 
Once the earthquake information is generated, it is sent to the Ministry of Earth Sciences and the Ministry of Home Affairs. A direct satellite link has also been established with VPNDMS. This is the satellite-based virtual private network for disaster management support. The hallmark of INCOIS working is its national and international scientific institutions. Thus, the Tsunami Warning Center generates and disseminates timely advisories to the control rooms of the Ministry of Home Affairs and the Ministry of Earth Sciences. This for further dissemination to the public. Indeed, a unique and very critical service. This is the Tsunami Warning Center of INCOIS.